we're back. I'm not dead. Thank you. It's new. I don't wonder how much money I lost in that bet. <laughs> <laughs> lost a lot of money with it not happening. Um, and then we got Mike. Yeah, Madman Mike. Madman Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Mike's, Mike's one of the guys in the shop. And these two guys have been saying that we need to get Mike on. Yeah, he yep. keeps us rolling, man. <clears throat> yeah. 100%. He comes down with a heavy fist. Oh, yeah. Actually, he asked me last week. Was it last <laughs> week that you're like, can I start being the heavy fist? Or something along those lines. I forgot what words. And I was like, yeah, sure. Well, I'm starting to learn the process. And that's yeah. really the huge thing over the last couple of months is learning every intricate process in this facility. It's been tough, but yeah, it's it is. easier. Yeah, it is. Do you want to tell the world? how much work actually goes into this place that people don't understand. Because when I do it, I'm just crying, according to we, Tim. <laughs> Listen to my cares. little violin. <laughs> but if Mike does it, work. he's just an See, employee. This part of it, though, you have to make it look easy. If everything is a lie, no matter what, you, you can't go, man, working's tough. Because nobody gives a shit. Pardon me. Nobody gives a caca. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, everybody knows that, but nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. Like, work is hard. If it were easy, somebody else would be doing it. Yeah. Simple. Oh, also, this is our SHOT Show special. Oh, yeah. Podcast. Yeah. Catch us in Vegas right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> really, what we mean by that is watch us while yeah, you're in you Vegas. Were, if you're in Vegas, you can watch us there. Yeah. And we're not at SHOT Show. We're not at SHOT Show. Why are we not at SHOT Show? Um, because work is hard. <laughs> work is hard. Yeah. And we are Travis busy. gave us the option either hear him cry or hear him cry more. Yeah. yeah. That was a bad statement. You thought you were funny. That was not a funny moment. Uh oh. Right. Somebody's hot. Speaking yeah, of shot show. Jump off the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of anyone say anything anyways. good come out of shot show yet? I'm going to I'm going to ask Tim and Mike cuz you're the two really watching. What do you think, Mike? You and I have probably got the most time on gun counters, gun culture, that sort of thing. Yeah, what do you so, see coming out of there that you like this year? Well, hold on. Let me let me pause for a second. Shot show is interesting for gun enthusiasts because it represents possibility. Like every year you wait for it to come around, and you're like, what's that new thing coming? Yeah. You're like, what's going to blow my skirt up this time? And there have been years where you're just kind of like, Man, that was horrible. I didn't see anything. This year is shaping up to be kind of, I think. One, one of, of those, those years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like, think innovation is getting harder and harder as time goes on. Yeah, no question about it. No um, question about you it. You can only reinvent the wheel so many times. Um, there's a couple cool things though that that H9 reboot from yep. Hudson mm -hmm. that Daniel put it's out. It's gonna be interesting nice. to see how that thing shoots. Yeah, I, there's no, no question. Lowest I think bore it's access be... ever on a pistol. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. Is it lower than that uh, Lugano Alien? They say it is the lower, the, the lowest bore access ever produced. Wow. <clears throat> so I'm curious at that aspect. I'd love to shoot it. Yeah, see me how, too. See how it feels. Well, they're right down the road. We can kick a door in. Them. And this is what I can say. I can say they really care about quality on that thing Absolutely. across the board um talking with them like they care it and sounds a whole lot like work is hard <laughs> yeah because getting it right is yeah not easy um like even just simple surface finishes they they just really care so it, it'll be worthwhile Absolutely. um to see that anything else that their you guys pistol saw? caliber carbine i saw they're coming out with the nine mil uh pcc dd is yes oh. they dropped that yeah, pcc is huge yeah. like it's a market segment that didn't exist and i think with uh ATF's position on the stock brace, kind of like interjecting into the scene. Right. I think that had a huge effect on the popularity. It though. would have affected all of Shot Show because anybody who had one coming out would not have put it out. If and I, if I, that rule went, did not go away. Yeah, right. and I think it's gone gone because Sig actually has started reselling right. models with the Sig brace, uh, you know, already with it. So. What's the? Uh, why am I drawing a blank at the moment? What's that one company that like? Oh. I it's SB Tactical? SB Tactical. Yeah, SB Tactical's the the main player. Or at least they were the originator. One of, the, one of the, I think there's two guys that own it. And one of them has a, like, is a huge Ferrari enthusiast. And he has some, like, really, like, not off-the-shelf Ferraris. And I say that because, like, some of them are more mass-produced than others. But he has some, and I'm like... You got all that from SB Tactical, <laughs> like, yeah. It's crazy how much that company, and they were the obviously loudest to fight. I, I saw that going sure. through the whole process. They had the most to lose in that whole situation. Yeah, they did. And they were feeding a lot of big companies. Yeah, they were. So, I'm happy for them. It's crazy how much um, can get litigated in this business like overnight. I read an article 
headline yesterday, the day before, um, some court ruling just allowed Mexico to start suing gun manufacturers in the states on the grounds of they are stating that gun manufacturers are supplying the cartel. No, that would actually be the ATF. <laughs> <laughs> the CIA. Don't shoot my dog. <laughs> the CIA. <laughs> Um, no, one of the no, 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 there's a clear division here, okay? ATF supplies the firepower, CIA sells the drugs. Oh, nobody's stepping ways. on anybody's toes. It's here. really interesting you say that because one of the comments was like, cool, can we start suing Mexico then for all the fentanyl coming into the country? Hey, dude, I'm not saying Mexico's not playing a part in that, but I'm pretty sure that's China. China's, mm. uh, the, from what I understand, don't know anything. Through about, Mexico. Yeah, basically moving it up through Mexico. But yeah, no, I just saw that on the litigation side. I was like, crap. Like, forget, like, how hard it is just to do this, period. Just to manufacture crap. But then you have to worry about just getting sued every single which way you turn yeah, all I mean, the time. Dude, you can get sued for anything. It yeah. doesn't matter. My wife got in a T-bone accident 100% being sued for it. And, like, has nothing to do with her. She just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. That being in front of another vehicle sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, honey. <laughs> Had nothing to do with her. Had nothing to do with her at all. Sure, and our industry is being vilified at every turn of every corner. Yeah, like you can't market on social media. You can't well, pay. You can't pay ad dollars. And forget even like fine. You can't pay ad dollars now. You can't post without everything just getting taken down well, constantly. That that right there is the end result of. Uh, an advertising crackdown. I can't remember what shooting. There was a there was a major publicized shooting. You know, a couple four or five years back, and the lawsuit hinged on the advertising. Yeah. And well, Sandy Hook started it. Is that was it? Sandy yeah, Hook? Sandy Hook started it. I forgot which <clears throat> gun company it in, in was. Vegas was well, that was yeah. another crazy one. And then Daniel Defense yeah, we still don't have an answer to why that took place. Daniel Defense got sued over um, their gun being used in the shooting as well. It's just, it's just like outrageous. it's wide open. But so. hey, you know, we're here. Just get rid of guns, we'd all be safe. <laughs> yeah, I just club people to death at that point. <laughs> Speaking of shot show, I saw this. Uh, thing I was trying to see other things that had popped up and I ran across this reddit thread that was uh like from 12 years ago hold on I want to pause for a second in case the audience doesn't know we live on reddit we live on that's reddit. our game um so somebody said why can't there be a shot show for the rest of us was like the main thing this was 12 years ago and posted in guns and this guy was like think about all the cons and they were like comic-con rubicon Furry con, <laughs> all that stuff. They actually had some funny stuff <laughs> in it. But then uh, somebody came in and they're like, this would never work for a number of reasons. And they did three reasons. I'm just going to read it out. Manufacturers have a hard enough time tolerating industry professionals. Yeah. If you ask them to deal with unwashed masses such as yourself, you will be looked at funny and committed to a, a mental institution. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was thinking about like I all of the that. times. I love that. All the random questions we get. Okay, number two. You know why dealers go to SHOT Show? Playing with guns is just one benefit. Mind you, I've talked to plenty of guys. Okay, so they're, um, they, uh, everyone here, for the most part, has wanted to go to SHOT Show because they've never been to SHOT mm -hmm. Show. But you talk to guys that have been to SHOT Show and they're now on their like third time, fourth time. Like by number two, number three, they're like, I don't want to go. Last week I was just talking to somebody and I was like, you going to SHOT Show? He's like, yeah, unfortunately. And like, I understand that because like, people think it's great, but the majority of people there are there just it's business. Hustling. Yeah, it's business. That's it. It's not playtime. My teenage son wants to go like there's no tomorrow. And for him, I'm sure it would be Valhalla. All the cool stuff. You know what I mean? But you put me there. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy parts of it, I'm sure. But like, but making those comments. Yeah, it's work, man. Like, I really, like, I'm not going to look at the new whiz bang, whatchamacallit. I'm going out there to make contacts because I like dollar, dollar bills. Dollar, dollar bills. <laughs> and that's essentially what it, this one said. It's like they do get away from their wives and businesses so they can get trashed on someone else's dime in exchange for a $50,000 purchase that's order. 100%. That is 100%. My, like, I get leaving Las Vegas. Like, it's hard to find like, something wrong with that. No, that's, that's my life. I would love that. Right and then there. number three, you know why manufacturers go to, so that's dealers. You know why manufacturers go to SHOT Show? They want to take orders and make money. Dealing with a guy who wants one of whatever pales in comparison to the guy who saddles up 
to the SIG booth at SHOT and places a $30,000 order. Yeah. So essentially there is not... A $30,000 order where you get 100 mag releases? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love you, SIG. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so you've been on the gun counter how many how many years, Mike? Um, I did a solid uh, solid two years with a company, um, large you know a large company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the largest retailers. Yeah, you know, their slogan's American American made for life. Um, it was a it was an interesting time. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. You meet a very very wide variety of people, uh, smart gun enthusiasts that actually know exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, that's not why we're here. Tell us the dumb story. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> yeah. Think of your dumbest story you got. And you Spill meet the some beans. people that just make you shake your head and wonder why you woke up that day. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know. Um, you got one that specifically sticks out? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I started out at the range there. Um, so That would scare me in itself, man. I, I just, I, I don't. asked the person, you know, hey, do you... Uh, you meet the criteria. You don't have any steel encased ammunition. You don't. Uh, do you have a sight on your on your rifle? Do you have a buttstock? I don't know. <laughs> what? So I open it up. It is a eight and a half inch, three hundred blackout. Just the just the tube, no buttstock. Not one optic. Not one iron sight. How did you plan to? be somewhat accurate with this on the range. I mean, I just point and shoot it. Okay, I will say this though. We have walked into that range with R&D si uh, slides, <laughs> no sights on it, no red dot, nothing, and went bang, bang, bang. And there's a few times, I forget who was at the counter at that time, they were like, well, we got one open range at the moment, but the target doesn't work. And we're like, that's okay, we don't need the target, we just need to know it goes. That was the story of my life. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need that thing to move so, back and forth. I sold him an optic. Nice. Okay, and he said, "Let me go out to the car and put this on real quick. I'll be right back." I got him. A, I got him a little uh, blade brace that you just put, you know, screw on. Yep. And uh, it did the brace perfect. It looked great. Looked at the optic, and I said, "There's something weird about this." The anti glare reflector part was pointing at him. Mm -hmm. So you put the optic on completely backwards, and he said that it doesn't work. <laughs> just yeah, had to flip it around and put it back and this, the, the man was happy it's it's impressive how much you don't know uh, you know as part of an industry you, you're in, huge into cars yeah. right? but if you put somebody like me in your car world I'd look like a buffoon Yeah. you know I'd just look like a, a moron I look like a buffoon to Chad really? yeah he, he, he'll, he's he'll double down on yeah. Okay. yeah well, he'll throw down even more <clears throat> it is so easy to look wrong in the gun world you know but there are some things that transcend wrong. Like you just kind of, like putting a sight on backwards, kind of like, hey, maybe he don't know. You know, putting your iron sights on your AR well, backwards. Maybe thing, he don't know. I had, I had this one lady, I haven't told this story yet. I had this one lady roll into the shop once and she's like, I was told I need a holster by my son. I said, okay, okay, you know what we have? No, but it's in, it's in my purse. Okay, is it loaded? No, not at all. Okay, well let's let's look. So she just throws the purse up on the counter, starts digging. I was like, let's look together. All right. Sure enough, that thing was sitting in the purse without a holster, tube of lit stick. No joke. Like everyone always jokes about it. Like oh, no, 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 no. tube of lipstick in the trigger guard. Pull the thing out. Drop the mag. One in the chamber. She had no clue she had a loaded gun in her purse. She thought it was just this like unloaded thing in her purse. No one's ever showed her. She has, no one's taken the time. Yeah. And that's sad, it really is. So, that could have been a very horrible tragedy. Well, across the board. here's my dumb story. This one takes the cake for me and trust me when I tell you I've seen, cause I've done, I don't know, more years than I care to admit on a gun counter. Are you saying you're old? I'm old. Yeah. I'm. I'm one day younger than dirt. Speaking of old, I just mm -hmm. had a birthday. Did you? Yeah. You're 26 again? Yeah. <laughs> just turned 22. No kidding. When? You're like 40. Um, Tuesday. This Tuesday? Yeah. How did I? Yeah. The wow. 23rd. I'm Jeez. sorry. I'm claiming illness. I yeah, actually here. you were in here and I was so just like ticked off at the world because I was spending my birthday with half the staff <laughs> out. <laughs> 
yeah. stuck in machines uh -huh. <laughs> with no end in sight of even going home semi early, which early for me is like four o'clock. If I could get out the door, which for the record, I'm usually here by six o'clock in the morning. So like, it's not like I'm some, there's you know, some pompous guy at the top that's like, woe is me. A roof I wrote in that tin. Listen to this jerk with the banker's hours. Yeah, you right. I mean? But for the record, I normally put 10 to 12 hours in this place on a daily basis. But I was like, the one day. Well, I'm really sorry I wasn't here to see you do that. Miserable. You were. You actually walked in and then you walked back out. I was here all Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. You don't for, like for like an hour. No. You had, to, you had to paint that thing. I'm not going to say what it was, but you had to paint that thing. And you only came in to paint that one thing. And then okay. you left. Okay. Cool. Don't recall. That's why there was pizza sitting on the table. Zero, bro. I said, yo, Papa John. Zero. My wife feels bad. Right. She sent food. <laughs> Well, uh, back to the... Anyways, uh, I'm sorry. Back to me. Back to... I wanted to talk about me for a moment. <laughs> me, me, me. You know, if only, you know, your workers, while they were sick, decided to still come to work. Was that what it is? Were you here? <laughs> he actually was. Yeah. Well, you know, hats off to you. I was told by a wise man who happens to own the place. Are you saying if I'm you're wise? Sick, <laughs> in this moment, <laughs> if you're sick, stay home. No joke. I called him the night before, and I was like, listen, I'm sick. I have no problem coming in. Actually, it just depends on how much you care. <laughs> that was the afternoon. And what's funny is you called me in the afternoon. You're like, I'm sick. I said, cool, let's touch base in the morning. All right, awesome. 30 minutes later, Tyler texted me. Oh, Yo, I'm sick. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Jeez. Stay home. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Talk to me in the morning when you're feeling better. Monday morning rolls around. Tyler hits me up. Yo, you still want me to come in? No, 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 you're good. And then Tim hits me up five minutes after that one. I Yo, I'm sick, I'm out. I'm like, jeez. I did not, I, like I thought about texting on Sunday, but I was like, I might feel better by morning. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna bother him. What would have been really funny if it was like 30, 30, 30. <laughs> just <Yeah. like. laughs> you just be like, text everyone else, be like, don't bother. Monday's a wash, guys. No. Instead he calls me, he's like. Yeah, so I start like hitting, like, I'm like, are you sick? <laughs> hey, Jay, remember the text? Yeah. Are you feeling all right? Are you feeling Good. all right? <laughs> are you okay? Why are you asking? Uh, across the board. And last week was hard. And I thought this week would be a little bit easier. Nope. Had to staff out. Well, hey, look, if it's anything to you. Uh, and then my birthday. I just uh, want to keep talking about me. Your birthday. Did you get I wasn't anything? here last week. I actually. Remember, it's a family friendly show. You got a remote okay. controlled. Uh, Excavator. A what? A remote controlled excavator. You know, nice. like the little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. That's cool. Listen. So the motto is you're never going to stop working. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> go home for fun. Simulate I, hard labor. No, no, no. <laughs> I told my wife. <laughs> go build that castle. I, I told my wife one day, weeks ago, actually, I've said this multiple times, but recently too, that I'd love to just push dirt around for a day. Like climb into the cab of something not have technology we were talking about this earlier and just push dirt around all day long just it's actually, i don't want to do it for a job it'd just be fun to do believe it or not that's what my brother does for a living yeah and this kind of circles back to that small world thing that you were talking about earlier so <clears throat> it's about a month ago i get a phone call and i'm like one of my old customers from gunsmithing days and he's like uh, hey man how you doing doing great man how's the move to georgia you guys killing it I'm like yeah this is where we're at this is what we got going everything's great and he's like Dude, sorry you left. Everything's, you know, kind of sucks that you're gone, but, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear you're doing good. And I'm, I'm just, okay, random customer out of nowhere calling me to just blow me up. I thought it was weird, you know? And then he goes, hey, uh, the real reason why I'm calling, I got this interesting story. And I was like, oh, great. I get to hear about some guy who found a sawed off shotgun and doesn't want to tell anybody. Or, you know, like the, all the, BS yeah. that you collect from Gus Ocala, Florida. Florida. Right. First off. Yeah. So uh, he goes, uh, so we got this new guy at work. I was like, yeah. And he goes, you know, I, I work for the, the city and there's drainage storm. They do do all the digging and the street work and whatnot. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. He goes, so I was telling him about you and how I had this awesome gunsmith that would come in and when he moved, he was cleaning the shop out and he handed off all of his reloading equipment and he he gave me all these stocks for all rifles. All of his non-serialized firearms. 100%. <laughs> Just everything. Yeah, unregistered machine guns, 
auto sear. By the way, he has five dogs. You can take out one and he'll be okay. <laughs> Come on, it's not me. I'm a kitten. No harm. Uh, so uh, um, he's telling this guy, this new hire, about how he had this gunsmith and this gunsmith packed up, left, moved to Georgia. And the new guy goes, what, where did he uh, move to? Oh, he moved to Savannah. Oh, interesting. Okay. What's that uh, gunsmith's name? Oh, his name's Tim. What's his last name? He's like, hold on, man. Let me look. Gives it to him. And uh, new guy gets this look on his face like, hmm, okay. It's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother has gotten hired on the city. Wild. And now they're having a conversation. And, of course, my brother, I think, knew about five seconds into the conversation who he was talking about, but he just let him go on and on and on. Because my brother does not hold that opinion of me. You know, good guy, hard worker. <laughs> Family generous. never does. Nah, <clears throat> that boy hates me. And I love him to death, but we saw two different childhoods. There's no two ways around it. Well, Megan knew I wanted to move dirt, so she said, here you go, you can move some dirt. <laughs> uh, my, my brother loves it, man, absolutely. Like, he is the most stress-free individual I've ever met in my entire life. Really? Yeah, you were like, how's things? He's like, it's great. Well, I got to teach my daughter her first remote control vehicle. That was kind of fun. She put it in her sandbox and she's picking up dirt, moving That's it, awesome. putting it down. So that is cool. She was excited to wrap it. I guess she spent all day Tuesday wrapping my gift. I gotta know: is this something that you ordered and said, "Hey, wrap this for me, so it's a gift"? Or no, no, no. no. My <laughs> wife literally. Look at this. this is really cool. My wife literally randomly ordered me a remote control excavator so I could move dirt. <laughs> you know what I want? I think it was it was like half joke, half you know. No, no, no. But actually, it's a hundred percent joke. It, but you love it. Yeah. I My wanna, daughter loves it. I want a remote control D9. I want to do a... Uh, See, and move dirt around. No, 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 no. I want to I armor it up. I want to make a kill dozer. <laughs> Whistling Diesel, I haven't watched the video yet, but he just bought a kill dozer. Uh, uh, and then what? went to the town. Whistling Diesel? Uh -huh. he, yeah. You don't know Whistling Diesel? No. Oh, he's crazy. Are you messing he's with us right now? No. Dude, I think that's we've like, had this conversation Dude, that's before. like right up your... You watch more YouTube than the rest of us. Yeah, I, I, I get that, but... Hey, we'll catch you up. Speak. Yeah, we're going to have to catch you up. But you would watch more of that than There's probably anything else you watch on I YouTube. I don't participate in. No, no, no. This it's was cool. right up your alley. Like, this is right up your alley. I okay. don't know if that's a compliment or not. Yeah. Anyway, he just bought a dozer. The, the actual kill dozer. Dozer, and then went cool. to the town to try to uncover it. I don't know. I haven't watched the video yet. I need to. Well, now I'm interested because exactly. if he's doing a kill dozer thing, um, I'm down. Okay. Tim's gonna go on a down the rabbit hole coming to work tomorrow. So I watched all 475 of his videos. I understand why that guy's rich now. <laughs> yeah. Talking about moving dirt, there was a show that I was a fanboy of, still am to this day. Um, you guys remember Gold Rush? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing for a season. To go out there and do something like that. Just not in the cold. And I think they only did it in the cold, cold. right? No, well, I think it's Alaska, so summer even summer's months, summer's so cold. they started off cold right out of winter. Uh, okay. Right out of winter. And then warms up. Through the summer. Dude. Mm. That's just, to, just to pull some gold out of the ground. That would be so awesome. You know what they say? Be the company selling the shovels, not actually doing the digging. That's yeah, where right. you make all the money. Yeah. All right, Mike, if you had to choose, because we just launched the 365 LC and the 320F, I see. So are you Full wrapping size? this back around to a uh, SHOT Show premiere type uh, thing here? I guess so. Cool, yeah. SHOT Standing Show, look shot at our product. In the spirit of SHOT Show. Okay, you've gotten to sh put plenty of rounds through both now. Yeah. Um, which one are you liking more? I'll tell you what, they both shoot amazing. Um, 365 model of the LC is just phenomenal. Um, I think we had a 12-pound spring on it this past weekend. Yeah. yeah, and that thing was so Matthew, smooth. okay, so Matthew found out, and then I'm gonna let you keep going. Sure. But this is part of that. Yeah. That's why I'm jumping in real quick. Staccato runs a seven pound spring, so now he's at he's ordering from the company that we got that spring from. I think he's trying to get like a ten and eight and a six just to see oh, <laughs> what it does. Interesting. Okay. Anyways, keep going. But that was a phenomenal shooting piece. I, I enjoyed it. Um, the three twenty. I've I've always shot three twenty. So that's my favorite. I want that slide so bad. That thing is, and people are going to be like, what does he mean he wants that slide? He doesn't even have one yet. No, because no. we're buried in production. We're building them. <laughs> we need Customers to get them out. First. <laughs> yeah. So, so 320 then. 320, yes. Um, and we need to, I just 
the, when people get our products in their hands is when we see the reactions. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. We can advertise all day long, but once people get one of our guns into their hands, you see the reaction this weekend. The person, they're like, oh my goodness. Oh my, you know, I mean, it's, we have to, we just have to hit more places. I don't understand how we did so well on that frame. Mike's gonna peacock for us, so I'm gonna peacock for us too, sure. because that's what it was. Every single time that flex frame ends up in somebody's hands. Literally the only thing we have, which is an easy solve and we're working on it, is like, we want more grip texture, right? But that's like the only complaint we have. Somehow, some way, and I don't know if it's because we have multiple different hands in the shop or what, but like that frame just feels, it's like, it's like the Cinderella glass slipper for every single person that puts There's their hand only on it. One other gun that's felt similar, and that was the Walter or the Walter PDP. And that, I mean, ask anybody. Yeah, it's see, a great grip. It's interesting because every gun guy is going to tell you a different gun but for that me, gun. That was great. To me, Jericho 941. I don't care what you think of the gun, the way it feels. No, Masada fits my hand. Tits, yeah, Masada. Yes. Tits, man. Not a cuss word, by the way. Um, <laughs> Did you see? Uh, it's biology, folks. Yeah, that's right. You see, Terran Tactical came out with a, 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 a collab with Canic. Canic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to see that one. Yeah. That, what do they that, call that, it the that, parrot, or is the parrot another? No, one? that's been around. Has it? Yeah. No, Maybe the, they built it off of the parrot. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's it, they're just calling it like uh, all I saw was the TTI. Canic has one of obviously. the best strike, striker fire triggers in the world. Yeah. And to see what Terran could do with that, I would be very curious. It just felt like a, like that felt out of left field for me for it you don't really my brain doesn't normally put canic as like oh no 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 i'm just saying my personal brain i now, know but you know. the question when is john wick 5 coming out because i'm sure <laughs> that's when he's going to be using it yeah no question i haven't even seen john wick 4 <laughs> yet it's on amazon or netflix i haven't had time oh it's great one two and three are yeah only one two and three or you gotta and i refuse this is bad, but I, I don't want to pay. I'm just waiting for it to hit the like one of the five streams. the reason why we have ads. No, <laughs> I I pay for five streaming services already. I'm waiting for one of those to show it. I'm still I paying for it. Equalizer three. I just now saw that. I just saw. I watched it. I watched it on Sunday. No, Saturday. I don't know. My family was out of town, and I was like, finally, peace and quiet. And I was kind of let down from it. Were you? Yeah. I don't know. I like the I like the whole he found his place kind of thing. That part of it was cool. I'm I understand. He found some peace, the, you know. But there really was no peace there. Yeah, there wasn't. <laughs> he likes peas. Peas. Yeah. Peas and peas. carrots. Peas and carrots. carrots. <laughs> like Jenny. Like and, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. The forest. Love forest. So yeah, that one I was good. I wish he was a real person. He is. Yeah. They got the timeline all screwed up on that though, but we're not going into that today. On what? The timeline of Forrest Gump. Oh, they did? That happened here in this. Where? Savannah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it. A lot of the square. Park bench is still Park bench is out there. Yeah. What? I had no idea. I'm doing that this weekend. I'm the, not coming in this weekend. The park bench. <laughs> the park bench got moved, though. It's not in the same square. Um, the, um, the angel statue slash fountain from uh, the Garden of Good and Evil also got moved. Like it was in one of the parks downtown. And they took it out because it became too popular. Garden of Good and Evil. Yeah, it's a movie. Okay. <clears throat> which is more or less like a TV show, but longer. Um, <laughs> it had Kevin Spacey in it. And, uh, that guy's still around? Yeah, I guess he's beaten every single Midnight rap that's been thrown. Garden of Good and Evil. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was filmed here, too. Right? Mm -hmm. There's yeah, a lot of movies so, filmed here now. So, yeah, I was actually on Reddit the other day. Imagine that. <laughs> and uh, it said the state by state, the largest contributor to the state's GDP. Guess what uh, George's is? Movies. Movies. Yeah, you know why, right? Atlanta. Taxes. Really? Yep. Georgia gave a tax break to the film industry just to get them here. They huh. wanted to be the new, yeah. So they're building massive film sets in Atlanta, but then also Savannah makes the perfect <clears throat> set because you can find. Yeah, whatever you need. Essentially. Yeah, Please just don't turn it into Hollywood. Please don't turn it into I, I just remember, um, uh, multiple times I've tried to get forklifts in the past and usually everything's always rented out to film sets like the equipment rental places in this town are always out of stock and it's usually because oh there's another film coming in so the riggers and all that stuff are in town doing random stuff so interesting fun little fact for the day yeah. anyways that's about it it is we gotta I'll get back what, to work um, 
we'll wrap it up, and then whenever we come back, I'll finish that story. That works. Cool. I don't remember what story it was. I know. <laughs> and Mike says, um, Mike says, buy the 320. Yeah, definitely. Yes. When once if you get a chance, get it. You yeah. won't be disappointed. Will be or won't be. Oh, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> I just want that with the flex frame. That's all I want. I want game. the 320 full size comped with the flex frame. That's like, I'm gonna patiently wait for that. And by patiently, I mean, I voice my opinion every like two or three days that I just want a flex frame for that. Yeah, keep talking, man. <laughs> Ditch ideas, you never know what's gonna stick. Ever. Ever. All right, well, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming to our SHOT Show special. Yeah, We'd thanks love for to letting me join, it was great. We're gonna have you on more of them. Definitely. And. Uh, you know, catch us in Vegas. We'll be at, you know, yeah. the, the 1937 in 2025. Yeah, we'll, um, we're will we shacked up in the Flamingo. And, uh, <laughs> Does that even exist anymore? Yeah, I think so. I thought that one got torched. I stayed in it a couple of years ago. Did you? I don't know. Yeah. Dude, that was, that was old Vegas. It's yeah. not old Vegas, right? Because downtown's old Vegas. It's like free much technically. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. old Vegas. Yeah. Um, but the Flamingo still felt like old Vegas. Like even their restaurant and stuff. Dylan's shaking his head like he knows, but he's never been out to Vegas and all he wants to do is go. <laughs> but I, uh, if, yeah. if it does not exist, Vegas needs to have a hotel that is straight out of the 70s. Like a retro hotel. I'm sure you could probably find it on Fremont. No, I mean like high class. I don't mean... Uh, you know, 30 years worth of cigarette smoke on the walls. I was <laughs> going to say, you're going to have you the cigarette burns on the You're sheets. getting the whole thing, buddy. <clears throat> I, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, no, that's I'm, probably I'm called the motel version. right off the strip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pay by the hour. Dylan, when was, when was the first time you ever took a plane flight? Uh, four or five years ago. We're going to have to start a list. Yeah. We're going to have to start a list. Four or five years ago was the you first know. time you ever took a plane flight. Yeah. So and it wasn't as far as Vegas. So. No, it was past Vegas. Was it? Yeah. Where'd you go? Sacramento. Sacramento. The hell is That's a Sacramento? long flight for your first flight. Uh, friends of my wife's. Yeah. So we need to get him to see more of the world. You want to take him to Vegas? He's coming back with a face tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's hey, a good one. Over, like, the movie. As long as it's a good one. It's going to be that Matthew's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Math- <Yes>. Matthew. <laughs> yeah, epic. And he, and he fixes it. By putting like 316 on the other one or something, make it a reference. Stop it. And with that, we're done. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. All right.